This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. On occasions, someone may ask you to send them an attachment, but ask you to zip attachment. The reason that they would want the attachment zipping is possibly to reduce its file size, and secondly, to stop their email program from stripping the attachment off the email. Some file types are automatically stripped off emails. Those file types may be databases, spreadsheets, programming files. So if you know that the kind of files that you're likely to be sending might fall into that category and therefore might be stripped out by an email program, you'd want to send that file as a zip attachment. And zipping does not take place in Outlook, it takes place in Windows. So the first step you would need to do is to use Windows Explorer to find the file you would like to zip. So in my documents, we have a number of databases. And I'm looking at this CMS underscore main dot ACCDB, which is an access database. If I try to send that as an attachment to most email programs, the attachment will be stripped off by the email program as a high risk attachment. If, however, I compress the file into a zip file, then the file will not get stripped out by the email program. So how can I turn CMS underscore main, which is an access database, into a zip file? I would select the file with a left click. Safer to click on the picture, as sometimes clicking on the name, Windows thinks it wants to rename the file. Then right click, come down to send to, and then compressed zipped folder. Now any other elements in the right click will be determined by your operating system and any programs you've got installed but you will always have send to, it will always have a pop out, and you'll always have compressed folder. That is from every version of Windows from XP onwards. So if you've got Vista or Windows 7 or one of the new Windows server versions, you will have the send to compressed folder. Click. You can see it's then zipping the file, and I end up with a zip file, which has the same name as the original file, so CMS underscore main, but a different attachment and a different icon. You'll also notice, if you move across to the right, it has a majorly different file size. So a consequential knock-on effect of zipping that file, as well as it being able to get through the email program's walls at the other end, it's also a lot, lot smaller because it's been zipped. I then need to send this zip file in my email. So I would attach that by the same method I've used previously to send email attachments. Start a new email, choose the paperclip, attach the file. Or from Windows Explorer, I can right-click that file choose send to, and mail recipient. Now assuming that Outlook is your default mail recipient, you'll find that it already creates a blank email, it's from you, you need to address it, it's even filled in a subject line which says email in and the file, the file is attached, and there is even a strap line added in by Outlook that your message is ready to send with the following file or link attachments, there's the file, and then note to protect against future viruses, etc. Now you can remove all that if you wish by highlighting as we've seen before and pressing delete to remove it. Or you can leave it in if you have no qualms about that strap line being added. So it's just then a matter of deciding who we're going to send this to. Maybe altering the subject line. I will leave that as it is so that the person at the end knows it's from me and that the file that's been received is a CMS underscore main zip. Your database, sir. And then send. So the zipping takes place in Windows Explorer, not in Outlook. And then you send that zipped file to your recipient. Now you can zip single files as we did with that database, or you can zip entire folders. In this gallery pics folder here, for example, if I double click to open, there are a number of pictures, 40 in all. If I go back a level, I can actually zip that whole folder by right clicking, send to, the same as before, compressed folder. That then zips up everything inside gallery picks into one zip file, which actually makes it easier to send and pass around because it's now one file rather than 40 individual files, and it will have compressed things slightly. Now because all the images are JPEGs which are already in a compressed format, it won't have had the same dramatic compressing factor as we saw with the Access database. In fact, sometimes there are chances that zipping JPEGs doesn't actually save any space at all.
unzipped, you can see it's retained the same folder name. So it's called it gallerypix.zip. But it's a single file that contains all those pictures. Hence its size, 63,313 kilobytes. Which if we open up that folder, do a control A to select all. Show more details. Right click. Oh, there we are, 61.8 megabytes. So you can see it's not really saved a massive amount. But the advantage is you now have a single file that is easy to move around, even if it's not to send by email, but to stick on a memory stick or a CD or DVD. So that's right click, send to compressed folder. And you can do that with any files, right click, send to compressed folder, or any folders, right click, send to compressed folder. And then that's then treated as a single file that you can then attach to an email and send to your recipients.